So I will talk about this uh, unfolding conformal geometry. And this work is based on collaboration with my two uh, master students, Mingi Kim and Yujin Kim. <clears throat> and the paper was uh, appeared in last month, uh, October, uh, August. Sorry. <clears throat> so let me begin with some motivations that I, uh, motivation for uh, my motivation for this project. Uh, this was, uh, as I uh, started to work on this, um, uh, so, so actually, uh, so I was discussing with Nicola about some project which we can do with the students with some computer stuff. And then uh, we were talking about uh, this type B uh, ano wire anomaly that uh, Nicola Blanze did with his uh, collaborator some time ago. And probably he will uh, talk about that uh, uh, tomorrow, right? <clears throat> and the, 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 the old work and then also new work. Uh, and then, uh, so it was, and then during this discussion, we uh, the aim was to to, to revisit uh, the computation that he did some years ago about this uh, eight uh, type B viral anomaly classification in uh, eight dimensions and hopefully extend to maybe even higher dimension like 10D. And there, uh, and then I started to study what they did with my students. And then somehow we are deviated uh, from the original goal and then end up with uh, just revisit revisiting this uh, unfolding uh, conformal system, the unfolded formulations of conformal system. So, and so let me begin with uh, what uh, Nicola did just with the, so, so I will so briefly summarize. So they took, I took construct this uh, vial, uh, type B vial animal, which is essentially just y invariant, vial invariant densities. They made use of wire covariant derivatives of wire tensors as basis, and they consider all possible uh, scalar ansatz with the right dimensions uh, in, in terms of this vial uh, covariant derivatives by tensors. And then here, what is important is this bio covariant derivatives. And then there was some recursive way to construct such covariant derivatives. And then in the end, we ask that by variations of this ANSAT vanishes under uh, and the by variations of this ANSAT vanishes. And then the construction of this bio covariant derivative is in a way that the vial variations of this uh, ANSAT is always uh, proportional to just derivative of sigma, not more than two derivatives, but just one single derivative of sigma. And then, and then we could one one could uh, just uh, uh, identify this uh, ANSAT using this condition that the system now vanishes. Uh, yeah, and then the, so the we I were revisiting this problem, and then uh, while doing so, I somehow somehow ended up. Uh, uh, revisiting the problem of unfolding conformal geometry. So that's some, some motivation, my, my own motivation for this project. And so, so this is in, in a sense excuse for me that, uh, that I don't know uh, many details, uh, many histories about this development in this field, conformal geometry. So I try to learn a bit, but uh, I may miss many, many important things. So probably uh, it will be also good occasion to learn, learn about that if you make some, some comments on this work. So let me begin with uh, uh, to, to talk about this uh, unfolding conformal geometry to, to explain what is the unfolding conformal geometry. Let me begin with this SO2 comma D case formulations. So I think both unfolding and also this SO2D gauge formulations of certain geometries, uh, I mean, uh, probably many of you are very familiar and even some of you gave lecture on that, on those. So, uh, yeah, but I, I as a, but I, I'm sure that there are at least a few people <laughs> who still are not familiar with that. So I will begin with some elementary stuff. 
So, but uh, I, I recognize that all the, this is not new at all, and that this is all the story, and then many people uh, contributed to this, and then even I don't know the, the, all these references, but I just put some names here, important names here, which I learned from uh, my colleagues. And also, so the so conformal geometric curvature, all these things are important, and also tactile geometry is uh, closely related to this kind of uh, uh, gauge formulation of gravity. In physics, uh, it's uh, studied uh, by these people and also later by the other people, including many others. So the starting point is that we take the, this gauge field A, which take value in SO2 comma the algebra. So clearly we have P and K, uh, translation and special conformal tra transformation. And then uh, this uh, rotation and the rotations. And we have the usual uh, pair bind and spin connections. And this is some other connection for special conformal transformation it, and yet another connection for uh, dilation. And then we can also con uh, just cal calculate the curvature. And curvature has also uh, four different components. <clears throat> Then uh, to get uh, uh, the, this conformal geome geometry out of this SO2 comma D, uh, SO2 comma D gauge theory, we need to impose a certain constraint. The first one is the familiar uh, torsionless con conditions. And there are a few, uh, two more, but actually this is not necessary. And it's, it's just a consequence of the other, this one. And then uh, this condition, if we impose these conditions, then we can eliminate uh, uh, some of the uh, fields in terms of the others. For instance, we know that uh, if we impose torsionless condition, we can solve this spin connection in terms of E pure by. This is quite, quite uh, well known. And also, and then if we impose the other constraint, then we can show that actually uh, the F, the, the field, um, okay. The, the connection corresponding to K can be also determined in terms of the others. For instance, B or the other. The, the R is here, the, the coverage related to omega. Eventually become really skeleton tensors in this way. F. Symmetric part of F is becoming skeleton tensor. So this is uh, again, all well-known story. And, and, and to remove this kind of some remaining degrees of freedom, we can also use gauge symmetry, which contains uh, uh, diffeomorphism and uh, dilatations and the viral scaling, but also uh, the other part, which is a uh, local Lorentz and also the other symmetry K related to special conformal, conformal transformations. Then using these two, two transformation, for instance, using this, the gauge transformation of a special conformal transformation, we can fix uh, the connection for the dilatation part zero. And then the, the other part is usual spin connections symmetry. At the J symmetry can fix, uh, can symmetrize in a, if you, in a sense, the fear by. So this is well known. In this way, in the end, we end up with only two symmetry, epsilon and sigma, and epsilon becomes essentially uh, DFL. And then uh, this is sigma becomes just wider scaling. Wider scaling. So in this way, we recover conformal geometry. So this this is a quite old and well known uh, story. Uh, unfolding is going a bit more than this. So, but before uh, introducing what is unfolding, uh, let me just summarize the situations. So what we have so far is that uh, uh, this equation actually. So this equals zero means torsionless conditions. And then uh, this equal not arbitrary uh, tensors, but the specific tensor, which is a C, which is uh, precisely uh, this uh, trace list part and window. So in this way, uh, this is related to the other constraint, for instance, this one. Yeah. And then this equals zero means uh, this equals zero. So this is actual conse consequence of this. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, can I ask you? Uh, yes, sure. 
on the on the previous slide uh the second constraint uh so ea means uh inner product with with something or uh yeah here the the vector field related to this inverse of here by t ah yeah ah, so okay okay is... and and capital e is uh, is the same thing it's yeah. the the vector field yeah okay yeah right Thank you. So later, sometimes I will use the notation yeah, del A, which is actually del mu and E mu A. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And then also, we, we, we can also show that the, the curvature part of uh, F, special conform transformations, again, is not zero. Is not completely zero by this constraint. Some some piece is remaining, and this remaining piece is what is called the cotton tensor, and it has precise this this shape. So in, in a sense, after imposing this constraint, just few uh, there are few possible remaining terms that we can put here, and then such term term should be arbitrary, and this arbitrary term is uh, just given by what you can call as wild tensor and what you can call as cotton tensor. So this is the situation. And here I use the, this uh, uh, K covariant derivative where K is not special conformal transformation, but actually the dilatations and J. Dilation plus uh, this rotation part. So this, uh, uh, this, this this is uh, natural because all the tensors we, we can um, categorize i mean the, um, how to say any tensor can be uh, uh, carry uh, a specific representation under uh, of k so it's useful to use this k covariant uh, derivatives so this is defined in this way and then i used the, the Conform our weight for E and omega and B and F minus one, minus one, zero, zero, one, which is natural. So this is again, what we all know. And then unfolding is actually uh, starting from there. Uh, we build uh, yet another uh, equation and even yet, yet another equations. Actually in the end, infinitely many equations. So this unfolding probably many of you are just very, very, very familiar, but just to, to say a few more, few words on, on it, it's the um, formulation that uh, Vasily have introduced to describe uh, this um, uh, mass higher spin dynamics, interact, uh, uh, interacting theory of mass higher spins. And then, uh, and then uh, uh, he uh, introduced, he used this formulation, unfolded formulation to various different model, in particular, also some conformal uh, theories. And there are several paper, including uh, this important paper, so implemented in YCF. Uh, yeah, so, so yeah, so, in, so in, indeed there are many things are known already, but uh, in, this in this project, uh, uh, I found that still some, some details are not completely, how to say, um, uh, detailed. Some, some. So the, the idea is there, but it's some, some precise, precise construction was not made. So I just, uh, in a sense, fill some gaps in these constructions. So okay, let me continue. So here in this game, so we we found that this C and the C is something that we cannot put to zero by this constraint. So this is arbitrary. And this is a wild tensor, cotton tensor, which can be arbitrary in this conformal geometry for the moment. And then now what we do is that, uh, okay, we view these tensors, C and C, uh, this wild tensor and cotton tensor as uh, independent new fields, uh, which happen to uh, somehow related to other, uh, to, to appear in the equations of other fields. And then now we want to give also equation for their equation for those fields, so which we can call probably some quote unquote evolution equations in the sense that uh, we want to assign how D of covariant derivative of D these fields uh, becomes. 
then clearly this, these are arbitrary fields. Clearly, we, we don't know what is the derivative of this field C and these two fields. But actually, uh, this C does not appear arbitrarily, but uh, in this way, actually, uh, this C should satisfy certain identity and Bianchi identity. Because of that, this equation cannot be completely arbitrary, but subject to certain type, to certain shape. And then uh, modulo this uh, specific shape, uh, there should be again some arbitrariness. So, so in the, in the end, what we do, what we should do in this unfolding is that we want to construct evolution equation for C. So we want to see, find out what is the covariant derivative of this C, and then we want to identify the right hand side of this part. Clear that part, there will be uh, new fields with more index, but uh, these new fields with more index should be constrained in a way that it is compatible with the Bianchi identity of uh, this field C, which Bianchi identity come from here. So the game is that clearly by imposing this equation, uh, uh, we should not, uh, uh, so we, this C field, the newly introduced field should completely determined by the other. Otherwise we introduce new degrees of freedom. This is not what we want. So the, one, one of the condition is that by writing this equation with some, some conditions on this field, this field should be completely determined by this equation. And then also by imposing these equations, we should not restrict this equation, this field C. This field C should be completely arbitrary. So by, by writing this equation, we should not restrict this C. So in a sense, this is kind of dummy uh, machinery, but it turned out to be quite useful in many, many different cases. Um, yeah, so here I write down Bianchi identity. So Bianchi identity is the essential one you need to, one you, you need to impose. So this is the first step and then we can repeat this game and introduce more and more field. We can, for instance, take the covariant derivative of this new field, then with a, some new field with a, even more index and then take covariant derivative of this field, then uh, you will get the uh, field with a, even more, more index. So in this way, we end up with introducing uh, infinitely many uh, fields, which is all zero forms. Uh, remember that actually the C was zero form because uh, we somehow pull out the, all the form degree in terms of this sphere line, which is invertible, so which we can always do. Uh, yeah, so, and then uh, we can write down actually all possible uh, such uh, uh, things uh, uh, in this way. So actually this is, uh, in the beginning, this can be, understood as an ANSAT. And later we can, by, by studying this set of equations, we can prove that actually this, this ANSAT was correct. So, for, so just to, to tell the uh, things is that actually this field should be all just to two row Young diagram. And then it turned out, it turned out that in the gravity case, in the, in the current situations, actually the second the box of the second row will be limited, the maximum two, two boxes in the second. And then delta is conformal dimensions, and then and there will be some correlations between delta and this uh, shape of the diagram. And then in these notations, the first one, two, is the first one is two, and then A2, A2, which is nothing but this diagram, which is nothing but white tensor. And here, this one is uh, two and one, and then conformal dimension three is nothing but the cotton tensor that uh, we introduce. So then, uh, then, then the, the full equation will look like this. So arbitrary such tensor, if you take dk, then it will be again some functions of those fields. So this will be a general form of uh, these equations, these unfolded equations. So there, the, this is one form because covariant derivative is one form and C is zero form. Form degree will be given just by E or F because of this uh, K covariance. And then this, this uh, functions 
E and epsilon and F, are, for the moment it's arbitrary, but we need to fix that by imposing uh, consistency conditions. And uh, this, uh, these two functions are functions of C, which is infinitely many. And, and then we can, for instance, take this uh, uh, E, function E, and then we can see, we can just think about what, in my, what kind of form it might have. And we can consider the, the tail expansions of this field. Eh? Then it will start with this uh, linear term C and then quadratic and then cubic, et cetera, et cetera. And this nonlinear term will come, come because actually when we solve Bianchi identity, this covariant derivative D does not commute. That's why there are nonlinear terms each time. So now we can study this uh, the consistency of this kind of system. This system would really describe uh, it is nothing but the unfold, unfolded uh, formulations of conformal geometry. Um, and the, but the, this is quite non-trivial because uh, this is uh, arbitrary m and arbitrary n and arbitrary delta. And this will be a priori, priori nonlinear functions of C and the precise form is uh, quite uh, challenging to find. So we can first uh, try to identify the linear piece, which means that uh, this piece, this piece. So this piece can be viewed as uh, actually uh, can be uh, viewed as uh, actually the some actions of uh, some operators on C. So, so we can define actually this is just uh, for the moment just the definitions. We can we can just uh, uh, express this expression as this way. Then actually the linear part of the equation can be written like that. So the, this linear part of F can be written as K, then it's written like that. And clearly this P and K is not, is should, uh, it is related to these uh, translations and special conformal transformations. Because uh, at this stage, if we check uh, the consistence condition and, and the Bianchi identity of this equation, we end up with this relation, which is precisely uh, the conformal algebra. PP is zero and KK is zero, and then this relation just satisfied. And then, uh, so P at this stage is uh, just a, the notation wise is that uh, P maps C delta plus one to C delta. So it's a lower conformal dimension by one, and K increases conformal dimension by one. Um, uh, and then this is this uh, result. I mean, this this part is closely related to sigma minus cohomology, and uh, one can view p is as uh, actually sigma minus cohomology, p actions. But there is a small subtlety or small difference uh, is that when you uh, talk sigma minus cohomology, uh, I think I think uh, often we uh, take the line linearized system. So that's actually one of the puzzles that uh, I um, found. So I was expecting to get some homology, which I mean, completely controlled the situations. And then I thought that it would be sufficient if I linearize certain background. But actually in this conformal system, if I take any background, for instance, a flat background, then around the flat background, E becomes a delta, right? Delta and then dx. Yeah, E becomes just a dx. And F vanishes. Uh, so if I just uh, study uh, consistency condition, then I mean we I get some some homology, I mean kind of conditions, but I do, I lose uh, these two equations, and I I end up with, I, I get uh, much weaker conditions to attack. Uh, so to get this equation, really I need to work with the linear uh, so linear part of the nonlinear equation instead of linearized linearized equation. It turned out that these two were quite different. And then, uh, so the P part P acting on C, we can express in general in terms of this, what is called the cell operator, which is apparently uh, very well known in the literature, including higher spin literatures. Uh, and then K uh, 
uh, actions uh, is uh, also can be written uh, in this way. So this is a complete reasonable form because uh, P is just a mapping one tensor to the other tensor. And then that will be given by the, just, uh, just this, uh, this young, young, diag young diagram decomposition group. And then there can be four, four different pieces. And this is in a sense, a young projections, po four possible young projections here. Right? And then this is uh, some arbitrary coefficient here. And then, uh, then we, so we, in order to solve these equations, we can just work uh, the, the algebra of this uh, uh, set of operators. And then we, and we can find some recurrence relation between P and K. This is, uh, once again, a typical procedure that one you would do in the usual unfolded machinery. So, so uh, Vasiliev and also many, many colleagues did this kind of uh, uh, consideration to many, many systems, but uh, not, not precisely this one, but many related systems were studied in this way. So, so in the end, uh, so we, so this all, this coefficient is what we want to determine. And then this uh, is uh, giving, we, we can obtain the, some recurrence relation. For instance, uh, PP commutation relation would give uh, uh, PP actions. So clearly, if we consider the linearizations around flat background, I don't see this part. So I can only talk about P actions. But uh, since I have the other part, I can talk about also K. And then that has precisely the same relations, actually. And then there is a yet another one that has some interrelated PK and KP relations. And then we can solve, we can try to solve uh, this uh, uh, recurrence relations. So here it's a sort of trivial uh, system uh, equation, but it's uh, not that easy to solve because there are many, many solutions, actually infinitely many solutions, I have to say. So that's why it's a bit hard, especially if we consider only this piece, there are, there are really infinitely many solutions depending on kind of boundary condition that we begin with. What is zero, what is not zero. Once we declare, declare what is not zero, then actually everything is zero. So, so anyway, we can solve, and then up, so it's important to assume, in a sense, uh, certain uh, field configuration to easily identify some some solutions. Then it's easy to also think about field redefinitions. Then we can show that actually uh, this is uh, there is unique solution. Yeah. So, for instance, in the conformal geometry, so if we I want to solve all of them, and then I put all these set tensors. Uh, which is two row young diagram, not all possible two row young diagram, but there is some correlation between delta and then the type of young diagram. And then putting this information here and then solve and up to field redefinitions, then we can show that actually there is unique solutions. So in this way, it's uh, the, the initial answer was good and then everything is unique and the system is just uniquely determined. If it's not uniquely determined, actually then, then means that um, there is some, how to say, some, it's a reducible, kind of, the situation is reducible. I guess. So, uh, and then we can see, we can consider also various on shell system. In particular, if I consider only uh, these relations instead of these two, then actually we can see uh, there are many, many solutions in particular, I mean, clearly this, uh, if I solve just this one, this is nothing but the usual uh, uh, sigma minus cohomology. In around flat space time. So clearly, I, I can get a uh, massless equation. But this answer is a bit more general, uh, a bit uh, more general than this uh, answer for massless equation because uh, I have a much more field because I have more, one more label delta. So in this way, I can describe many other systems, essentially, all possible system uh, made by related to uh, symmetry rank two tensor. So in particular, uh, we can. Uh, spot uh, this conformal gravity, back of flat geometry, and then Einstein gravity case. So, for it, so this is the the the, 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 the this field that uh, we have. So this is a vial tensor. This is cotton tensor, and this is another actual derivative of vial tensor, but uh, derivative was put in the, the other way. 
And uh, this is all uh, the most, uh, the, the old tower or all, all, all the content. But we can see that uh, uh, if I consider only these PP equations, then I can put also some conditions such that uh, this, actually this line is some coefficient P, this P coefficient, all these P, P coefficient. And the equation PP, uh, this equation means that uh, this times this is same as this times this, something like that. And then we can see that actually uh, among different, among solutions I can have uh, this means that uh, this is zero and this is zero and this is zero, this is zero. So in this way, I can end up with a message system, but otherwise in general, I have full official, uh, official gravity system. But we can also just to find out other solution which correspond to other, uh, this body back tensor. But there are actually many more things that I didn't manage to uh, classify all of them because it, that I realized that will turn out to be, I mean, correspond to all possible equation that you can write on uh, symmetric rank two tensor, in a sense, with, with some gauge symmetry. So that, uh, that will be too much. So just I realized that. But anyway, most of system can be understood uh, this way, can be obtained in this way. So here probably you should have not noticed that since since I'm doing just this, uh, actually this is uh, essentially just uh, I'm cons constructing some representations on the space of uh, uh, this. So this is uh, can be viewed as a, a generator of uh, some infinite dimensional uh, vector space, and then this infinite dimensional vector space is nothing nothing but the uh, representation space of uh, this so to comma to comma d. And this representation actually should correspond to uh, this uh, conformal geometry, which is official. So we, we can easily expect actually this is uh, something to do with uh, uh, official uh, spin to Fratkin Zeitler module. So indeed, it's the case. So the representations of this SO2, SO2, D representation is well known, I think. And then in this, uh, uh, in this talk, we are talking about conformal geometry, and then their uh, non unitary uh, representations are also relevant, and including, I mean, the quite, quite large uh, amount of uh, non unitary representation can be also systematically studied. And then uh, in, in mass literature, this BGG, uh, these formulations. Uh, and in physics literature, again, this paper is. Uh, uh, quite uh, uh, important, important places to learn uh, about those uh, constructions. And, and there, there we can find uh, uh, that actually the one specific rep representation can be understood as, a, as a, uh, something to do with the conformal gravity or conformal hair spin. Actually, this specific um, analysis of this uh, or study of this representation was uh, put in this uh, paper in more detail. And then there we, we can see that actually some module which begin with the uh, two and then the SS, I mean, lowest weight state is uh, delta equal two and then it begins with uh, uh, this long diagram SS. Uh, that 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 representation, that unitary represent, uh, that irreducible representation, is uh, uh, something to do with the uh, conformal higher spin. That can be understood in various different ways. One one way is that this representation can be understood as quotient like this, and then first one can be viewed as the really the, the field itself, uh, spin as field itself, uh, and the other thing is back flat equation. So we can again check this uh, from various points because this is rank S tensor essentially you can see. And then conformal dimension you can check. And also the equation itself is the same rank. So it's the same type uh, equation. And then also from the dimensions of these things, we can, check, we can um, un understand that actually this is the field and this is the equations. So this was the on-shell system. Uh, but what we want, what we are dealing with is offshore system because just we are unfolding conformal geometry. We are not imposing any back flat equation yet. So then it's, it's uh, natural to 
expect that uh, what we are describing is this module, this one, shadow one. Uh, sometimes it's called the shadow, or we can call it also offshore platform title, which is uh, not irreducible. Uh, but anyway, this is a good candidate. And this is has a simple, in, in, in the case of spin two, it can be written in a simple manner like that. So this is really the uh, rank two tensor. And then we subtract some part and then add some part. And this again can be interpreted as we subtract gauge part, which is too too much because it includes also large gauge transformation, which is corresponding to killing tensor, conformal killing, and we put it, put it back in sense. So this uh, is the this uh, shadow. And then from this expression, actually, we can see that how it is composed in terms of the uh, SO2 times SOD representations. And then we can end up with these expressions. So here you can see that uh, this is a SOD Young diagram, which is two order time two row. And this is a SO2 eigenvalue, which has some correlation between uh, this diagram, and this conformal way. And this is precisely uh, what we can find in this construction in terms of this CP. So in this, indeed, uh, in this way, we see that actually, uh, so in a sense, not surprisingly, uh, we see that unfolding just make uh, good con connections with these representations that we can easily expect that it should be related to offshore uh, conformal system. But here, uh, let me just uh, talk just a few sub subtlety in this because I also spent some time in um, figuring out some, some, some issue here. So one thing is that uh, uh, here in this representation theory, everything is organized in this way. But in the unfolding, naively, we would say that, okay, it's this. But uh, it's, uh, it's not, actually this was easy. Just uh, anyone can just figure out if you sit down and write down each generator and then how this representation can be mapped if we move to the other by multiply chi, multiplying i, et cetera, et cetera. So you can just uh, ch change SO2, 2, d to SO2, d but uh, generators, the reality was a bit uh, uh, interchanged by putting some I in one generator and putting some other I in the other generator. But in the end, we have still SO2, d but uh, some non-compact guy becomes compact and compact guy is non-compact. And there is a, this operation that you can make. And, and then this I will call as big rotations. And under this, you see that they are just smoothly matched. So in, in a sense that uh, uh, under unfolding, all these tensors is Lorentz tensors, and that all these are non uh, the, the finite dimension representations, which is non unitary representations. But uh, these are just under weak rotation, just smoothly, smoothly go to the unitary finite dimension representations of SOD. But anyway, eventually, if we go to the SO2, D level, unitarity will be lost. So it's not, so in the end, the unitarity is not a problem. But anyway, so for each slicing, this is uh, unitary. Each, each of them is unitary. So there, there is, this is one issue. And then there was another thing that uh, I had some headache to just uh, uh, figure it out, was uh, a representation label. I, actually, you here also, you can see that uh, sometimes so this uh, delta was uh, flipped. Uh, you, you see that here, it was minus delta instead of plus delta. Uh, so somehow if you write down here, the representation appearing here seems to have a negative uh, 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 quantum number, if you like. So for this reason, I, I think it depending on the literature, some, sometimes uh, some literature prefer to use, uh, put uh, K here, K here and P here, just to avoid this uh, sign flip. Uh, of course, we can flip the sign in that way, but uh, if we do so, then we change uh, anyway the uh, definitions of a uh, conformal symmetry, so it does not solve that problem. So just I wanted to just uh, figure it out uh, how what's going on there. Again, it, it was not big thing, but uh, so I just uh, noticed that actually that we can see, think, think about two different actions of SO2, D. One action is nothing but just actions of this 
these guys. I mean, just uh, what is defined as it is, it is here, T actions, yeah. NK. And then here, so that can be uh, mostly easily viewed as uh, like that. Uh, so C, the one easy way to describe C is uh, C as uh, functions of auxiliary variable. So I introduce uh, variable U and V, and I, I contract with this index M and N. So M, uh, M, M different index, N different index. The first group of index I contract to U, and then for the second group of in index indices I contract with the V. Then, then each of this uh, set operator can be viewed as, uh, as you see here, differential operator in U and V. And then you can see that, okay, PK is nothing but one action is this, uh, precisely this differential operator actions on the on U and V. And U and V is actually nothing but actu uh, the generator of this, a uh, basis of this uh, uh, representation. So this, uh, this is acting on the uh, basis of a, uh, this representation. And, and th this, if you just read off uh, the quantum number, you can see that actually this is not the shadow module, but it, it's dual. But we can see also there are another transformation that we can think, which is nothing but gauge transformations, but with, res with respect to, if you like, constant parameter, delta p, delta k, but the linearized part of gauge transformations for those ones. So this is still, I mean, clearly forming uh, a sort of comma DR zebra linearized part uh, up to uh, nonlinear part. And this transforms not the basis, it, this does not act on U and V, but it, it acts really on the, the field itself. So it transforms the fields. And then uh, this can be viewed as the, actually the, the actions of it, uh, as the, this shadow because they, they are in dual relation. This is one also small thing that uh, I realized. Uh, and then I talked, so this is uh, uh, related to SO2 comma D only at the linear level, but in general, this uh, gauge transformation will be nonlinear because the equation itself is nonlinear. And then the, this nonlinearity can be also uh, studied to a certain extent, not in detail, but just to a certain extent. So if I sketch, so this, uh, we, want, we wanted to identify this function E and F, and E is a uh, function of C and function of F, C. F is also function of C. Previously, we just identified the linear part of C. In the sense, the first uh, Taylor coefficient of this function E and the first Taylor coefficient of this function F. We need to identify higher Taylor coefficient. For that, again, we can just uh, impose the Bianchi identity uh, at the full nonlinear level, then we end up again with the uh, four, uh, three types of equations. If you linearize each of these equations, as we will end up with not just uh, simply here, this was PP commutator equal zero, and this will be PK something, and then KK. So this uh, is a linear part of this, but in general, this is nonlinear equations, and we will have a, a nonlinear rest equations of this AI algebra conditions. And then it's in general complicated to attack, but just uh, in principle, uh, things th this, um, one can always organize uh, this problem I and mean, this unfolded, uh, non-linear unfolding problem in this way, but in this conformal geometric case, it's particularly in a sense easier because already we have explicit the uh, conformal number in front of our eye. And it just to suggest how, how to organize the problem. So in, in this way to, if I want to do the, to find out uh, some certain unfolding to certain order, uh, we can easily see that there are a finite number of steps that we need to solve. And each time it's just a lin uh, linear algebra problem. So, so, so in this way, a priori, if you have some, uh, with computer skill, we can just take this problem to finite order of delta. Then usually the, the delta and then the, this order of non-linearity non of the equations goes together because the delta is bounded from below. For instance, uh, C 
uh, four equations. If we take derivative, this is altogether conformable with five, then we, we see that this is at most this way. We cannot have a C2, 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 C2 because then conformal weight will become too big. So, so in this way, all the time, if we just consider certain conformal weight delta and then D, then here, this what appears here is not completely nonlinear, but some polynomial order delta of delta of delta. So that's just the one thing. Uh, yeah, so but so in principle we can do this game, but uh, unfortunately, yeah, I was not <laughs> that ambitious, <laughs> so I didn't do that game uh, in this work. Uh, but if we do that, uh, that can be I mean used in these uh, classifications of wire invariant. So let's just come back to this problem of wire uh, invariant classifications, which was the original motivation. So in this unfolded settings, this wire invariance or this type B wire, wire anomaly can be just uh, considered, can be understood as just a gauge invariant. And then Vasilev already uh, had uh, considered this, how to co uh, construct uh, uh, gauge invariant or action charge, all this kind of gauge invariant quantity. And actually we can follow in a sense that this uh, construction uh, here also. And then now just we can just make uh, uh, answer for this uh, gauge invariant in this case, uh, gauge invariant, uh, which is uh, uh, yeah, gauge invariant under SO2 comma D. Then we can show, easily check that uh, uh, first, of, uh, first of all, the gauge invariance with respect to D part is easy because it's uh, sufficient to make sure that uh, and this conformal dimension is just uh, well put. And then also, uh, anyway, the K, K, K covariance is easy because it's uh, all the tensor has already K covariance. So K invariance is easy, K in the sense of uh, SO1, one times SO1. So what we need to care is the translations and uh, special conformal transformations. But uh, it was quite curious for me that if we check the gauge variation, actually these two uh, translations and the special conformal transformations uh, come together and then the, uh, actually they require the same equations, same equation. So in a sense that if you require a special conformal invariance in this setting, uh, then that's actually enough to, for, the, for the gauge invariance. Because if we K vanish, and this term vanished and the other term also vanished. So we just require this one. That's enough. Special conformal invariance, gauge invariance under K actions of this uh, form, the density. That's enough. And indeed, in this way, actually, we exactly end up with the condition that uh, Nicola Blanze and Edmunger worked out. Uh, you can check it maybe, maybe if you don't remember. Yeah. So here they checked this one. So this is a, actually the nothing but special conformal uh, transformation parameter. We can on uh, gauge fix the versions of special conformal transformation parameter. So this means that uh, actually this y variation here, y variation is actually. Um, gauge variation with respect to special conformal transformation. And then via covariant derivatives is actually this uh, DK covariant derivative and all those. So this is uh, essentially the same uh, thing. So I'm just revisiting the, what is done there um, in using unfolded formulations in, in, the, in this way. So, so then uh, the task is essentially the same. We put all we, we make all possible answer using this field. And the uh, answer is not that complicated if you work out, work at a specific dimension, because then actually this is there as a finite number of terms that we can write down here. Then you can just consider the, the variations of these fields. Uh, and then in lower dimension, this is very easy because four dimensions, what you can write as a four dimensional, uh, the scalar density, 
and that is unique. And then you can see that this is already k invariant. So that's the end of the story. And in six dimensions, there are actually three terms that you can write down because four two or three three, but three the dimension three object there are cotton tensor, cotton square, but there, there is also other tensor which have this type, this shape, this square. But again, then then we can take the k variation here. What is good is that. Uh, so and most we have uh, C4 and then K variations, D, D, K variations of uh, uh, C4 is a conformal dimension three. So conform, uh, conformal dimension three guys cannot be uh, nonlinear. So actually this DK is always, uh, it should be linear at this stage. There, there is no nonlinear term. So what we have identified is just uh, this uh, K action. That is enough. So in this way, we can just check the computation, do the computation and easily identify uh, to end up with uh, uh, some two terms here, which is actually uh, dimension five uh, vector. So this is general pattern. If we take a dimension D scalar and then we take the variation, we will end up with a dimension D minus one uh, vector because the vector index comes from this uh, E, which is the parameter of uh, this the conformal transformations. Uh, yes, so, and then here indeed, we have only two possible candidates here. So it was in a sense clear before doing computation, but the precise combination is one plus two here and one plus two has come from the data of this uh, uh, transformation. And then anyway, so by imposing this equal zero, this equal zero, we just recover the usual uh, uh, 60, this uh, varying variant in this manner. And if we do the same game with eight dimensions, which, which uh, Nicola and Gihan. collaborated, yes? Sorry, can I ask, in 60, there are three invariants. Uh, yes, so here, this is uh, only non-trivial invariant that we, Considered that there are other other guys is uh, uh, contractions of vial the vial tensors C two G two G two I think this is the giving the other candidate probably yeah so let me see yeah I think so th there is there is a unique one uh, if it's it's uh, not written as just a, a con simple contractions of vial tensors. Ah, okay, I got it. Thank you. So yeah, indeed, uh, there are all the time there are trivial guys which can you, you can write just using C two. Then we know that C two itself is invariant under K. Then actually the problem is trivial in a sense. So here I I neglected that term here. I could add C two C two C two. But then that's all possible contraction. All, all possible contraction. <clears throat> so in eight dimensions, uh, if uh, so, I I can do this kind of counting. So clearly, we know that uh, if I take the uh, this variation, the result will be uh, dimension seven vector, right? Because uh, the vector because of this ka the, the transformation is vector-like transformations, but the dimension should be reduced by this conformal special conformal transformation nature. And then uh, here, uh, what we can see is that uh, I had this, uh, in terms of the quadratic guys, uh, I have seven guys. And in terms of cubic, CCC, what all uh, dimension eight scala that I can make with the uh, three guys is 11. So in this way, I can also uh, see that eight and seven. So, and then I know that, uh, uh, so this piece is not just, so this flash is the gauge, gauge value gauge transformations, this delta, which is uh, um, eight, eight dimension can, it can be and most quadratic. So, so that means that if we take gauge variation, it can be either quadratic, CC becomes either CC quadratic guys or cubic become cubic. And cubic will become just cubic. So then again, you can see that uh, uh, there will be some guys C which will be just invariant under this or there will be some specific combinations of CC and CCC, 
for the uh, quadratic part should be just invariant because uh, there is no compensation at this level. But uh, that guy gives some terms and get uh, some this remaining, uh, this uh, result should be compensated by variations of CCC. Anyway, we can think about easily th this way. And naively here, it was uh, uh, easy to uh, guess the uh, kind of reasoning behind uh, the result of uh, Nicola and collaborator. Because what they found was five, and indeed, uh, actually, during the discussions of Nicola, he pointed out this. And there were one guy which is mixing these two, and there are four guys which is using just a CCC. So, from this counting, in a sense, it's so uh, easy to somehow guess that actually this map is just by the uh, surjective. So, in, in then actually, just, the, just the, the counting will be level minus seven. And then uh, it will be just easy to find out that there are four. Actually, this is a, this flash is just a linear transformation, linear part of gauge transformation. So in principle, one can check uh, relatively easily this. But uh, what is what I cannot do at this stage, this part, this is a precisely quadratic part of the gauge transformations. However, anyway, if there is any, uh, 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 this was guaranteed. I mean, this this CC quadratic part of bi invariant should be invariant already under um, under linearized uh, linear part of K transformations. So that can be checked. So anyway, similarly, I can do some some check. But uh, anyway, definite answer cannot be easily made. But I can see usually that. Uh, at this uh, at the last point, it seems that probably things are subjective and we will have many, many uh, invariants which will be survive. But uh, at the quadratic level, it seems that it's uh, naively overdetermined, but actually the condition is not uh, in that uh, like that. So yeah, actually there is only or, uh, there is one unique solution in this case. And 10 dimension also we can expect there is one one solution. And indeed, I, that I checked. And in principle, it's not difficult to check the, and with the quadratic part. And even any uh, given order, just the checking linear part is not that hard, but I didn't do, but uh, anyway, that can be done. So if I do, for instance, if I consider some, some invariant under linear K action, for instance, a certain specific order of CN, object which is invariant under linear K actions, then under this section, linear part of delta, we will go to C and then I can just solve linear algebra problem and identify. So this problem I can solve, then it did that. if I identify those, then this would correspond to linearized vial invariance. Because uh, under linearization, this, the, the, this transformation becomes just a linear part of that linear part. But uh, I'm not completely sure whether this will be enough for the to, to predict the counting. Uh, but anyway, maybe this is a good way to think about this problem. Maybe just to, you consider on just count to the linearized wide invariant and then think about all possible wide invariant. So if there is any difference in number, then I think we, this thing should be explained. If not, probably we can prove <laughs> so nicely. Anyway, so this can be computed exact explicitly in, in to certain relatively lower order of n and the relative low, low, low dimensions. In eight dimension and 10 dimension, I checked uh, it's indeed unique. And this can be, can well be related to Q coverture. I, I think if I probably understood correctly, the story is more or less, this should be corresponding to that. Okay. So yeah, there are yet another aspect. Oh, okay, it's the time. You see that in my slide, the <laughs> this, uh, sorry. Somehow the time was fixed as to, to the 40. You, you should slowly move to the... Yeah, okay, the... sorry. I, I was misunderstood at this time. Because somehow this slide, yeah, it doesn't tell that. Okay, so... So, so this uh, conformal system is official. Uh, so I can uh, uh, restrict to the official system by imposing some algebraic constraint. 
And then, so this algebraic constraint, for instance, Einstein gravity can be obtained this way, this equals zero, F is nothing but some Scouten tensor. M. And conformal gravity can be obtained pre precisely the Park tensor object is zero, the, the Park tensor part. And there can be nonlinear corrections, but actually we can field redefine, make field redefinition so that this just uh, disappears. Um, and then what is in interesting is this uh, constraint, which is uh, uh, bringing the conformal geometry to uh, the back flat geometry is uh, given by this back flat condition, which is K invariant. Uh, so this is interesting. So in this way, we, one can think about different type of constraints. So maybe I can, I will go short. So I, so I didn't do really thorough analysis, but I could just think about at least the three type, different type of constraint one can impose. One is uh, this back flat type equation, which is constraint itself is K invariant. Uh, and then uh, the other type is, uh, uh, it is uh, not invariant, but if you take K variation, that is invariant under previously imposed constraint. And then there is another constraint, which is not invariant, but does not generate the new con con conditions, new constraint. So this, uh, in this third cases, we end up with the reductions of symmetry. And this is a, a typical example of Einstein equation. So this is, was a relatively natural to guess, but I don't see precise meaning of this um, yet. So, and also offshore system itself can be viewed as some, some uh, SO2 comma D gauge theory with some, this kind of constraint. So this is another, things way to see this. And the last comment is that, uh, so this is the last slide, is that we have seen that uh, at the long linear level, the, actually this is uh, delta P, delta P and delta K. We have seen that uh, uh, this, uh, the active, ex active actions of SO2 comma D become nonlinear because active actions of SO2 comma D, if you like, that is, uh, Nothing but gauge transformation with a constant parameter, and that this is becomes nonlinear. And indeed, this is a, we can see that actually this is nothing but reflect that uh, the system that we are dealing with is uh, just the Lear algebraic with uh, this infinite dimension of the, this many poles. And and then this is nothing but actually the general um, uh, futures of unfolded system. So zero form field is this manifold infinite dimensional map, coordinate over uh, this infinite dimensional manifold. And then here, the one thing that I can, I, I'd like to share with the people is that uh, some curiosity that I want to share is that, so this acts naturally, because this is nonlinear, this is acts naturally in the space of functions of C. For instance, it was uh, acting on space of functions of C, if when we construct the wide invariant, we were making certain polynomial, and then among those polynomials, we are made, we were we found that the space of function C, which is invariant under K action, that was by there. So this was uh, now if we see from the perspective that so two comma D actions, uh, and then the, the remembering C was corresponding to the this module as uh, the, the shadow module, so the specific representation as so two comma D. You can see that C itself is a uh, something to do with the Hilbert space of the underlying theory. Then space functions of C can be clearly, uh, should, can be can be interpreted as some sort of Fox space because it's tense product like, because it's at this still a classical level, but uh, one can easily guess it may be something to do with Fox space. And then uh, later, so in the wide invariant case, we were imposing that uh, this functions of C is invariant under K actions. So now we see that uh, not, not just the C, the linear C alone, but the function of C. And then we impose that this function of C is invariant under K. So this is uh, somehow looks like uh, extending the representation theory to, you know, to, to a nonlinear level. So minus three minutes, uh, minus four. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, that's it. <laughs> okay, thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, so I was uh, just misunderstood that this time that you see that uh, 941, which is fixed, I don't know, for some reason. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Um, oh. Some questions?
So if you can go back to uh, to your uh, counting of invariance uh, was uh, four dimension and uh, six dimension, right? You wrote uh, one yeah. scalar. Yes, uh, this one precisely. Yeah. So uh, so four D is one scalar, right? So uh, yeah. actually, uh, there's uh, three independent differential invariants of order two in four dimensions, right? Uh, so um, how is this your one scalar uh, singles out among those? There are three differential invariants. Three uh, in invariant uh, scalar differential. Uh, in, uh, three scalar differential invariants of order two. Right. So you write one. What's special about this one? Uh, this is usual variant invariant in the four dimension that we. So I, I I'm not very familiar with the length. Uh, 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 the term that you uh, describe. So this is why, why tensor square. This is, uh, I think, unique. I mean, this is the unique uh, by invariant density in four dimensions. So do you, do you have in mind operators, differential operators acting on scalars or what? So here- No, just, 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 just scale operators of, of eight zero actually, yes. Well, but, but there's a nonlinear operator. Yeah, so he's but it's also nonlinear, right? He's the, the metric is the basic field. You, so you, you start from the jet space of the metric, yeah. the metis, yeah. and then there is only one. Uh, well, let's say conformal structure, even to be two, because we discuss conformal invariants, right? So if you, you start with jets of conformal structure and you just uh, uh, see how the group acts of different things on it, right? And in two jets, for dimension is three, which means three scalar invariants. But here, here they are not only um, scalars on the different morphism, but also on the vital transformations. But then there is only one. Of course, there are scalars on the different morphism. And then you can make densities by square root of the metric. But then on top of that, you ask for vital invariants. Yeah, maybe. Conformal invariants. Yeah, so we're talking about conformal invariants. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Conformal it's, conformal. About conformal. it's not about metric. Yeah, it's conformal. Yeah, so it's yeah. obtained from wilds, of course. But it has been gauge fixed, huh? as maybe Ihan explained. You, you fixed the gauge, so. Uh, well, I, I don't know what it means. I mean, it's a variable conformal structure. If you can use the gauge, it shall be invariant, right? That's, that's what it means. But this, this unique invariant would be norm of the wild tensor squared, or what? Yeah, that's it, yes. Yeah, this is just a wild tensor squared. I mean, what, what makes this unique? <laughs> because there are none of those. <laughs> That's because there are no yeah. others. <laughs> so like, you, you probably mean like polynomial maybe. Right? So well, like, I mean rational. Yeah, so yeah. Rational, here, so like, rational invariants. If you want them also to be density, scalar densities and the diffeomorphism, then there is only one. You have to transform correctly in the diffeomorphisms as well. The metric transform in a. No, I talk about weight zero actually, so there will be no. I talk about diffeomorphism as well. Maybe we can discuss. We can discuss. Yes. Yes. I feel it. Yes, indeed. I think. Yeah, I have a general question. I'm really confused why you're talking about unfold. Of course, it's maybe a way to think about it, but we know that. What you call unfolded formulation, it is just determined by certain Q manifolds, which we will target yes. in the algebraic. And this, this Q manifold is just a Bialystic complex of And this complex is essentially this minimum model, which was computed by Nico at Boulanger. And uh, it is known that you. Unfolding and also, if you if you, if you study invariance, you just study cohomology of the BSC complex. So, what what is it? What what unfolding brings you? Why it is? Why you insist on? Uh, of course, you cannot be do once you have BSC, you have unfolding immediately. Why do you insist on unfolding? What what it is? Insist in the sense what what's my motivation or what? 
why I call this unfolding? Yeah, why you why why you why you say unfolding conformal geometry? Conformal geometry was unfolded many years ago in any system, you know. Why, what, what, what new? Do you do it explicitly to order so it gives you some additional iteration? I don't know. Yeah, for me, this kind of procedure. Because there is one kind of thing we are discussing is topomology, essentially. That's uh, <laughs> what we are talking about. You know, this complex is not. So, just, yeah, in general, we can understand this is a general structure like that, but uh, I unfolding the system i mean the precisely starting from origin, original original uh, how to say metric formulated formulations of the field and then just i do this machinery and then write down precise equations so that uh, was not uh, i mean i could not find precise form and then that's uh, apparently it's related to to clearly uh, nicola's work and then there was a uh, and the way that I end up with it, and ended it to this. Uh, if you take uh, if you take formulas of Nicola and then yeah. consider uh, consider forms with values in this thing, this is like a KZ model, you, you get unfolded, and this was <coughs> no relation. Unfolded is just a Q manifold, and this Q manifold is known. So there's nothing to well, precise, pre precise shape of the Q, Q I mean, this uh, Q, what, what we call Q, this Q structure is not known, right? How we, uh, do you know the form expressions of Q? Well, explicitly, of course, not it's infinite-dimensional, but there is a structure beginning and the structure is known. It was written with <laughs> Yeah, but but in a sense that that unfolding can yeah I mean, that that can be applied to to any system in this way. So in that sense, it's a, it's known before. Yeah, but here I, I I try to do precisely what kind of details can come out from here. So you see that uh, in this unfolded, uh, I mean, the Vasiliev and many other collaborators looked. Uh, uh, different models of uh, uh, try to unfold many different systems, and then uh, they identify different modules and and how they are related to these equations. And those uh, I, I'm just uh, uh, doing that kind of work here, and which seems to be useful in this uh, viral invariant classification. I'm, and, and it's in a sense it's equivalent to what Nicola was doing, but anyway, it gives uh, just another viewpoint of what they they are doing. Of course, the, that kind of the, the, this formal uh, the structures here appearing here can be interpreted in various different ways. That I agree, but uh, 